The second international workshop on the Toarcian Oceanic and Oxic event is an activity of the project IGCP 655, Toarcian Oceanic and Oxic event, Impact on Marine Carbon Cycle and Ecosystems of the UNESCO and IUGS. This project actually includes 102 researchers from 64 research centers corresponding to 25 countries. The study of the early Toarcian Oceanic and Oxic event a catastrophic event that affected the ecosystem during the early Jurassic results of great interest because it offers the possibility of establishing models for applying to environmental changes occurring currently and in the future. The workshop was hosted by the Department of Earth Science of the University of Coimbra, Portugal, and took place in Coimbra between the 6th and the 9th of September of 2018. There were a total of 47 participants from 15 countries including Algeria, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, Iran, Ireland, Italy, Morocco, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland and the United Kingdom. The two following days were dedicated to the field trip focus on the Toarcian Oceanic and Oxic event in the Western Iberian margin and its context within the Lower Jurassic evolution of the Lusitanian Basin. David Moreno, I'm an environmental engineer from Medellin University. I've been working uh, in the IGCP C36 group uh, since four years. I started in this uh, group uh, when I was a bachelor student uh, and uh, I have the opportunity uh, during my study uh, to travel to Quebec, Canada, uh, to make my uh, thesis. Uh, I worked uh, in this opportunity with uh, the professor Jean-Marc Raymond. My name is Paula Aguilera, I'm geophysicist, and I'm currently I'm the president of the Colombian Geothermal Association, and also PhD candidate of the University of Auckland in New Zealand. So I met Daniela Blesen at uh, Jacqueline Lopez by 2016, at the first uh, IGCP 636 annual meeting that they hosted here at the University of Medellin. So my experience in working with Daniela um, and working on this project has brought me to so many places and one of the most impactful being that I actually moved to Medellin for a period of four months in order to meet Daniela and the team that had been working on this project before me. It was a very immersive experience in which throughout this experience I was also able to travel to Chile to participate in the IGCP meeting of November 2017 in which I was able to meet other people that have been involved in this program um, and able to collaborate and share ideas and create even a bigger network. Uh, just recently I was given the opportunity to travel back again to Bogota to participate in the RENAG 2018 meeting this past December, um, in which I had the opportunity to actually present my work so far, which was 
incredible. And it was amazing to be able to present my work in one of the places where it honestly matters the most and to be able to gain feedback from Colombians who are involved in the geothermal industry. So it's been an amazing ride so far being a part of this program and this UNESCO project. And I am hoping that it only continues to grow and expand and facilitate even more geothermal collaboration and learning in the industry to just create a, a more extensive and stronger international geothermal industry. My name is Matias Locare. I am a PhD candidate of Universidad de Chile. And my advisor is Linda Daniele. I participate in the Geothermal UNESCO project since 2017 and I was part of the staff that organized the second annual meeting in Santiago, Chile and I joined the discussion in the third annual meeting in Orléans, France. The Earth experienced major events during the Paleozoic era which lasted almost 300 million years from 252 to 542 million years ago. There were ecological crises, mass extinctions, dramatic climate changes and periods in which the ocean became devoid of oxygen. One of the key obstacles in understanding these events is the difficulty of precisely estimating how much time there is in sequences of Paleozoic sedimentary rocks. This severely hampers the understanding of climatic, ecological or geochemical changes and underlying forcing mechanisms for these changes. It is therefore essential to improve the Paleozoic timescale in order to unravel the history of the Earth during the Paleozoic. Cyclostratigraphy is a powerful tool based on the detection of the Milankovitch cycles in the sedimentary record. The Milankovitch cycles result from periodic variations in the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, which affects the distribution of sunlight that reaches the Earth. This influences Earth's climate on timescales between 10,000 and 1 million years. Through the integration of the astronomical timescale with biostratigraphy and radioisotopic dating, IGCP 652 intends to document the environmental evolution during the Paleozoic, with a focus on the Ordovician to Devonian. IGCP 652 gathers more than 200 participants from all over the world and promotes participation of young scientists and scientists from developing countries. So here we are in the Effenberg Quarry, uh, close to Dortmund, and we are here in uh, the framework of the IGCP 652 uh, field uh, excursion because we wanted to ask all our participants what they think of these very cyclic alternations between the greenish grey colors and the red colors. So because that's really a, an open question, are they related to any uh, cyclic uh, climatic change? And if they are, are they uh, related to Milankovic forcing, to astronomical climate forcing? That's detached. I have to, um, you know, given a good, yeah, okay, here we are. Ah, right, great. Some bayers. Ah, coquina, yeah. Like a, a fingernail, like structures, and those are the, where the coquinas, where the trial bites are occurring. Ah, coquina, yeah. Yeah, so basically, you know, with a, with a decently heavy hammer, a two-pound hammer. It was the Cambrian ash, the, the older one. So, one of the things we've been hoping to do was to try and put some, you know, stratigraphic constraint on the bi-stratigraphic constraint. If you have little well, collections for me to look at and see if what you have, I'd be happy to come around and see. Thank you. <laughs> Because we might make some decisions here, we might not look at the small lakes and we'll only look at the big lakes. Well, we know that the big lakes are actually not. Is that very important when we are trying to uh, involve the uh, 
private entrepreneurs to invest on the hydropower. If we are thinking about in, in the long run, because first thing they will say, how long these glaciers are going to be, and how much, what type of changes can be will happen with the lowering, lowering it down. And you just, so it's just in the hope that you will train your students to do whatever you learned here and build on the science part of glaciers. I'm able to solve my own problems because I was stuck in many parts uh, while doing this <coughs> practically in GIS and remote sensing, uh, especially the uh, debris cover mapping and snow cover mapping, that those parts. So it really helped me. Actually, I remember Nadina has written a bit what is the stage of Remote, I mean, the knowledge of remote sensing and yes, I remember I have it as intermediate. <laughs> so I came here, I realized even I'm not a beginner. This gives us a very good platform to uh, meet each other, uh, colleagues from Nepal, uh, from India, and so we are meeting new people, and I think we are also making a strong network. And they're about collaborating, and they're about bringing people together, making this happen. And it's not just about us coming to teach you, really. It's just about making things happen together. And I think the way that we work together, I think it's beautiful and it's really beautiful. So, again, thank you for you. You all made this happen.